So in this video, we're gonna go over how to build your own camera stabilizer or Steadicam. And this design is based on the Tiffin Steadicam Merlin and it's also borrows heavily from some really good design ideas from W.S. Sclater or W. Sclater, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, apparently nobody is, and Studio Amarello and links to their work is included below. The main goals of this project were one functionality, of course, this thing had to work. And so it does work for a DSLR, I have a Canon 60D plus uh, a hot shoe mount that can also add a light and a microphone to it. So I've got this rig, definitely works. You can probably just add more weight to the bottom if you want a heavier setup. It's capable of static balance and, in theory, dynamic balance. And dynamic balance is basically when you pan the camera left and right. There should not be any unnecessary tilting. And so this design, which is based on the Merlin design, theoretically is capable of dynamic balance, although obtaining it in practice, at least perfect balance, is very difficult. More importantly, you can rebalance this stabilizer on the fly. Um, it's very fast and you can also fine tune the adjustment left and right and front and back. So if midway through a shoot you want to point the camera up, point the camera down, or if you want to add a peripheral that makes it left heavy, you can compensate for any of those things uh, very quickly and easily. And of course another goal is the whole do-it-yourself kind of thing. You want to be able to build it easily and relatively inexpensively. So the Steadicam Merlin costs $800. This stabilizer costs about $110 for every single part, every single tool used to construct the stabilizer. And if you already have access to all the tools and fasteners that you need, you probably can get away with about $60 for just the parts that you probably don't already have lying around the house. All the parts and tools used are easily obtainable from either Amazon or Home Depot, and a complete parts list is included in the description box below. There's also no power tools required. That means no holes to drill, nothing to saw. These are all off-the-shelf parts. The only tools you're going to have to use are a screwdriver, a pair of wrenches or maybe a ratchet, a PVC pipe cutter, PVC primer and cement, some epoxy putty, and then either a file, sandpaper, or a dremel. There's also very few permanent connections, and this means that if you screw something up, generally you can backtrack or start over again. And this here is a time lapse of me taking apart the entire top of the rig in about 20 seconds. In reality, this whole process took about 15 minutes. So now how to build this thing. So first there's the counterweights, those are actually really simple, they're just ground clamps. You can find them in the electrical section in a hardware store, and we're just adding washers to them. You can replace the screws, the ones that come with them are quarter inch diameter and they're one and a half inches long. If you want longer, and I did, you can replace them, and I used four inch screws on the bottom, and on the front one I just used another one and a half inch screw. Now we're going to go over the parts I need to cure overnight plus the gimbal. So first a jumbo arm hook made by Lehigh Crawford. You're going to want to take the cap off, and that's just a knife or a screwdriver, you can just cut or pry it off. And then you're going to attach a 3 quarter inch PVC male adapter. So you've got threaded end on one side, and then the regular coupling end on the other side. You'll want to use plenty of epoxy putty on those threads, and really fill in any gap between those threads and the inside of the jumbo arm hook. And you can see in this picture I had to attach an extra coupler beneath the male PVC adapter, and that's because when I installed the elbow originally, I installed it incorrectly, it was kind of off. Uh, it wasn't very straight, so I had to cut the elbow in half, then reattach with the coupler and make sure everything was in alignment. Then you're going to take a 3 quarter inch conduit PVC elbow, it's a 45 degree elbow, not a 90 degree elbow, and then connect that using PVC primer and cement to the 3 quarter inch male PVC adapter. Next the gimbal, and the handle is just a 3 quarter inch CPVC pipe with a bike handle around it. CPVC is used because the CPVC couplers fit almost perfectly around the skateboard bearings. Both the PVC and the CPVC can be cut with a PVC pipe cutter which can be bought at a local hardware store for about $10. I recommend making many shallow cuts all around the PVC before cutting all the way through to ensure the cut is straight. The exposed pipe in the gimbal handle then fits into a CPVC coupler. and These are all 3 quarter inch. Note that the coupler is cut on one end so that it will fit flush with the skateboard bearing. Next, the top of the gimbal is another CPVC coupler that's also cut on one end to fit flush with the skateboard bearing. Epoxy putty to the coupler is a half inch fender washer, and then epoxy putty to the fender washer is a 7 16th inch nut. Now, the inside of the gimbal consists of the Traxxas 5151 universal joint slash drive shafts and two skateboard bearings on either side. You can actually get this with just one pack of the universal shafts from Traxxas. They give you two male and two female shafts, and you take the two male ones the one pictured here is actually the larger female one because I didn't have any males left. Take the ball out of one of them and then connect both of them together with just one ball. 
Then you want to cut the stem so that they're just taller than the width of a skateboard bearing and then sand them down so they'll fit through the middle hole. Then you can set everything permanently with some epoxy putty. And to keep the skateboard bearings from slipping out of the couplers that are supposed to house them, I added just two strips of scotch tape around the skateboard bearings to add some friction to the outside of the bearings so they'll stay inside the CVPZ coupler. There's also a 1 inch long 7 16th inch diameter bolt that will need to be epoxy putty permanently to a 1 half inch fender washer. And there's also some quarter inch wide strips of scotch tape around the very top of the threads where the bolt meets the washer. This will allow the bolt to sit flush between the gimbal rails with no play. The last piece that has a permanent connection is a quarter inch wing nut that is permanently attached to a 3 8 inch cut washer. A quarter inch cut washer is not big enough so it needs to be a 3 8 inch cut washer. An epoxy putty will do fine to attach these two together permanently. If you can find a quarter inch wing nut that already has a flange or a washer connected permanently that's the same size as a 3 8 inch cut washer then that will probably be even better. And the last part, the top of the stabilizer. So the first thing you're going to take is one of your T plates and make sure that the beveled edge is facing upward so that you can get your screw as far in as possible. And you want to use a flat headed machine screw and not a round head because the flat head has a little slanted edge where it beats the threads that will go into the T-plate further. And so this is a one and a half inch long uh, quarter inch by 20 thread machine screw. Next you're going to take your second T-plate and attach it to that same screw, the same one and a half inch long quarter inch diameter screw. But this time go through the base of the T. If it were a letter T, it would be the bottom of the T instead of a size or at the crux of it. And so that when you put them together, they should form this H shape or an I shape, depending on how you look at it. Next, thread that same screw into the rear hole in the jumbo arm hook so that the T plates are on the flat side of the hook. Now you're going to secure this with a quarter inch nut. And as you tighten, you want to make sure that the T plates are perfectly aligned with the hook before you fasten this and secure it down nice and tight. I should give you a warning in general, don't try to over tighten things. If they're hand tight or maybe not quite hand tight, maybe finger tight, that should be good enough because these are metal parts that are not incredibly thick and so over tightening can cause these things to warp and you don't want that. Next we're going to take a third T-plate and screw the base of that T-plate onto that same uh, one and a half inch quarter inch diameter screw. Now this clip is from later because I forgot to add this nut. So you do want to add this nut to that same screw we were using before above the T-plate and then add a plastic insert that comes with the bifold door bracket. Make sure the flat side faces the jumbo arm hook and then thread that on. And so now we're back to originally inserting the bracket. There should be an extra nut in there that's not in this clip. And then you secure everything with yet another quarter inch nut and this will hold it on. But at this point you don't want to fasten it too tight. You want to leave the bracket some room to move because you're going to want to adjust it later. Now take the one and a half inch long quarter inch diameter round head screw and attach a quarter inch fender washer to it. And then put the screw through the second hole in the jumbo arm hook. And now you're going to take a quarter inch cut washer as well as two quarter inch nuts and thread those onto that screw. You are going to want to take a wrench and a screwdriver and get these nice and tight. Next you're going to take one of the plastic inserts from another door bracket and then this bracket will go on. And you actually want to push this one all the way so that the bracket is pushed as far against the screw as possible. Then secure with a nut. And after you've got that door bracket secured you can go to the first door bracket and push it into place so that it's right next to the second door bracket. Then secure that nut so that both of them are tightly secured. Now we're going to start on the rear camera sled rails. And you're going to take a 3 quarter inch screw. doesn't matter if it's a flat head or round head, but if it's a round head you're going to want to use one of the washers that comes with the door bracket. And you're going to push that screw through the door bracket and then thread the plastic insert that comes with the door bracket so that the protruding side of the insert fits through the door bracket and go ahead and thread the screw through because the plastic insert is pretty tight around that screw. Next you're going to take two quarter inch fender washers, put them around that screw, and then push the screw through the hole and the rear T-plate and then fasten this with a nut. Not too tight because you're going to want room for adjustment later. But you do want to make sure that the end of the door bracket rests on top of that very first screw uh, that's holding the T-plate down. Next you're going to repeat with another 3 quarter inch long screw 
and then a door bracket, and then the plastic insert, and then two quarter inch fender washers, and then you're gonna push this through the hole on the opposite side of that same T-plate. Make sure that the ends of both brackets are both resting on the center of the first screw before tightening with the nuts. Now you're gonna take a two inch long machine screw, push it through another door bracket, then the plastic insert, and then two quarter inch fender washers, and then I screwed this up the first time, so you actually have to add yet another washer. This is one of the small washers that came with the door bracket, and a quarter inch cut washer. Then thread the screw through, and then you're gonna push this screw through the second T-plate on the other side of the hook. And don't push this all the way through yet because we wanna put two nuts onto that screw between the two T-plates. And so there's gonna be a little bit of kind of threading the nut up and then threading the screw through some more and then threading the nut back up and then threading the screw more. And then you wanna get this so that the screw does go all the way through both T-plates with the two nuts in the middle. The purpose of these two nuts is to keep the T-plates separated so that when you tighten down the door brackets, it won't bend the T-plates. Next, you're gonna add this third nut to that same screw, but you don't wanna completely tighten until you've got the door brackets, both of them, where you want them to be. Then repeat this with another door bracket on the other side. Notice how the brackets on the back of the arm rest on the head of the first screw. And so in order to make sure that the door brackets on the front are level with the ones in the back, we're gonna to need to place two quarter inch cut washers beneath those two door brackets. And there's nothing securing them down other than friction. So in the beginning, you're just gonna have to hold it down with your finger as you tighten the nuts on the left and the right, just beneath the door brackets. And when you tighten the nuts below the door bracket, you just wanna go in order from the one right below the door bracket to the second one below that and to the third one on the bottom. Now at this point, some of you may be asking, why two sets of rails on top? And the answer is that the first time I made this, there's only one set of rails on top but when I would use it, the weight of the camera being a little bit forward of those rails, if I ran with the camera, there'd be a little bit of shake, as you can see in this clip. So having two sets of rails eliminates this shake. Next, we're gonna go over the camera sled, uh, starting with the quick connect on top, and then there's a two inch flathead machine screw. That's a quarter inch diameter that goes through. Beneath the quick connect, there are four three eighth inch fender washers in order to give the quick connect clearance above the nuts next to it. Then the screw goes to the crux of the fourth T-plate, and then on the bottom is a 3 8 inch cut washer and a quarter inch nut. And you want to make sure that the sides of the nut are parallel with the front and the back of the quick connect. This is so that they will also be parallel with the rails later so they can slide. On either side of the camera sled are half inch, quarter inch diameter, flathead machine screws that have a quarter inch cut washer mounted on the screw, then a quarter inch nut mounted on top of that, Next, a 3 8 inch cut washer is mounted to match the one in the middle, and then all of this is put through the side hole in the T-plate, and then a quarter inch nut is mounted on top of that. Make sure that quarter inch nut does not get too tight because this will need to slide freely along the rails later, and then you can tighten as you need. In the front of the camera sled, just like the sides, there's a half inch screw with a quarter inch cut washer and a quarter inch nut, and then you have to make sure to remember to put that 3 8 inch cut washer above that then push this into the front of the sled, and then a wing nut goes on top of that. That wing nut will be used later to tighten and loosen this connection. Now we're gonna go ahead and attach the rails. And so the first one was gonna be a six inch long, non-threaded, uh, quarter inch diameter bolt that goes through the very back holes of the back door brackets. And then you wanna take another six inch long, non-threaded, uh, quarter inch diameter bolt, and also push this through the second set of door brackets, also through the rear hole not through the front. And now you're gonna take the camera sled and mount it onto these two rails so that the bolt fits between the washers beneath the sled. So the nuts beneath the sled should be touching the bolt with the washers surrounding the bolt. Now you can take a third six inch long, non-threaded, quarter inch diameter bolt and then push this through the front, the front hole in the front door brackets and so now your camera sled should be able to slide left and right. And now you're going to take the final bolt, but this was a threaded six inch long quarter inch diameter bolt. This bolt needs to be threaded for two reasons. The first reason is diameter. This diameter is slightly less than the non-threaded bolt, and that gives the camera sled a little more room to slide. It's too tight with the non-threaded bolt on. The second reason is for fine adjustment. Later we're going to add a wing nut for fine adjustment of the camera sled. So this threaded bolt goes through just the first hole, and then take the wing nut washer combination and thread that onto the bolt before it goes under the camera sled. You want to make sure the washer side faces 
the camera sled because the washer side is what's going to touch and push the camera sled for fine tune adjustment. Push the bolt through the hole and then secure all the bolts with quarter inch nuts. Now the way I use this camera sled is I push the wing nut and the camera sled too far in one direction and then I fine tune by just twisting the wing nut and that will push the camera sled little by little in the direction that you want in order to get the rig balanced. And once the rig is balanced, you can tighten the front wing nut on the front of the camera sled to lock it in place. Now we're almost done. Now we gotta do the bottom rails for the gimbal. You're gonna thread through two six inch long non-threaded bolts. Before you attach the second bolt, you wanna take the 7 16th bolt with the washer attached and then attach that to the top of the rails. And then you can secure the rails with nuts. You're gonna thread the rest of the gimbal onto that 7 16th bolt. And once you do, the top of the stabilizer is all done. So mount your camera, get it balanced, and then you're ready to fly.